Well, I, I'm glad that, uh, that you paired or put us in sequence because the presupposition behind the work that we've been doing is that material abundance allows people the opportunity to reflect more deeply upon their choices and seek out and, and make wiser choices about their lives, their time, their resources. That's the hypothesis behind this, based upon uh, several years worth of work through the very materially abundant um, last 20 years in the United States particularly, and looking at philanthropic choices that people have made over that time. Um, so that's the presupposition behind our work. The work so far um, has focused first on the advisors, the wise counselors <clears throat> that people with wealth have been choosing to work with them around their decision making. And we summarized that based on 30 interviews with different very noteworthy advisors in a report that came out at the end of last year. And in particular, we ended up looking at um, the, the self-descriptions of these advisors on what allowed them to offer wise counsel. And a lot of it is maps on things that other people here have been talking about in terms of empathy, uh, self-reflection, going through processes, whether psychoanalytically or psychologically based or more personally based of developing self-knowledge. Um, also, emphasis on relationship and trust within relationship with clients. Emphasis on client preparation, developing a sense of vocabulary uh, and self-efficacy as clients. And then finally, notions of professionalism and how there needs to be a kind of sense of profession of putting others' goods first and having professional boundaries that all flow into the giving of good advice and the reception of, of good advice. Now, our work has been a bit ironic in the sense that having gathered that information and presented the analysis of it, at the same time, we've been trying to poke holes in it. And we've done that primarily through the use of our website, where we have presented uh, what we call the portrait gallery of wise counsel, where we've taken various historical or literary figures presented uh, who have you know, been identified as wise counselors and, and then analyzed the, their stories, as it were, uh, with a view towards showing how they defy the categories or the characteristics that these advisors or, or maybe judges and therapists and others come up with as characteristics of a wise counselor. Um, the second way we've been ironic is that we're now into the process of interviewing family leaders. So these are uh, people that we've identified who are heads of families or prominent decision makers within families with very significant resources and who have also been identified as playing significant roles within their various communities. And we've asked them fundamental questions about their search for advice and the implementation of advice. And one of the things that we've really been noticing is that they hardly ever say, my advisor is the, the source of, of this wise counsel to me or, or the like. It's, it's usually, which may be gratifying for most people here, usually teachers, professors, advisors within educational contexts or spiritual directors of various sorts, in addition to family members, parents, grandparents, et cetera. So, that has been the main thrust of our work thus far, that presentation of the characteristics, self-identified characteristics based on narratives of these advisors, and now turning in addition to the gallery to the self-presentation of family leaders. And I thought just uh, you know, in line with Howard's invitation to kind of say, where do we go from here? Some thoughts about where we're going uh, from here is that, first of all, one of the things that I didn't expect going into this was the reception that we would, we would get from people, whether advisors or family members, about this research. I thought they'd kind of scratch their heads and say, that's, that's pretty odd, or that's irrelevant. Um, in, re in response, we've actually usually gotten humorous reactions. This is funny, you know, that you would be asking us about wisdom. Um, that, and it, 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 almost like, is this kind of a joke? Here, or you know, it's, it's, it's at least a pleasant joke. So what, did, what do I draw from that? I think, that first of all, that there's a sort of receptivity to this work. It's not offensive or irrelevant to people in today's day and age. It seems incongruous, but yet needed, too, and that there's a desire for discussion about wisdom. Um, and then also maybe a bit of defensive reaction. Can this really make a difference? One of the ways that we've seen it make a difference, both for the advisors as well as for the family leaders, is the response to the questions we've been asking and the experience that they then describe based upon their interviews 
when we ask them about ex specific experiences of where you've received wise counsel, specific experiences of where you've given wise counsel, and then also ask them to describe what would you give to yourself as wise counsel at this point in your life based on all that you've talked to us about. And the, the meta descriptions that they've offered of that experience has been that it felt very meaningful, very deepening, that, that it, it brought together a lot of their thinking in a very reflective manner. So um, I think then that, and the reason I put up this particular quotation from one of our respondents, who's, who's one of the respondents in the family leader um, position, is that our experience as a whole here has pointed to the limits um, of, of our understanding of this topic. And you see here this respondent really pulled together wise counsel in a very wonderful way of saying that the wise part seems to point to ultimate questions, the counsel part seems to point to the particularities of this or that individual situation context. And so really for us, it forces us back to that fundamental question, how is it that, or what does it mean to connect these universals with the particulars? What truly is wise counsel? And then I think, for me at least, it's also forced me back to the question, of what do we mean by wisdom research here? And we use that term in this kind of self-identified group very, very commonly. Is there a difference between research on the one hand and inquiry, love, erotic desire for wisdom on the other in the more classical sense? Does research and the way we've been talking about it so far this morning shape the outcome of what we're finding? This goes back, I thought Deborah's comments were wonderful on the difference between narrative, and I'm clearly sort of on the narrative path, and measurement on the other hand. And, and then finally, does the search for wisdom for us imply or demand some questioning of research as the accepted, almost traditional, maybe you want to kind of stretch it and say sort of theological construct for our understanding of the world. Should we be asking ourselves, is research really the way to understand wisdom uh, most effectively, most truly, most meaningful for ourselves? So anyway, that's pretty far from wealth. But I hope, again, it's maybe an example of where this context of abundance allows us to search out uh, the meaning of abundance and our choices within it effectively. So thank you. <laughs>